Good afternoon. I thank you for coming here today. Uh, as the former controller of Erie County for six years, I find what we revealed today before the Erie County Legislature to be very, very disappointing. Uh, when I was elected comptroller, it was at the height of the red green fiscal crisis, and one of the first things I had to do as comptroller was restore the credibility of the comptroller's office. Because truthfully, no one believed in anything that was being stated by county elected officials at that point. It took some months to do, but we showed it and restored it by doing solid audits that were based on true auditing standards that truthfully were not based on fabrications, half-truths, and other things that unfortunately were revealed by our office today before the Erie County Legislature. For the last few months, we've been working with the Comptroller's Office to try to get a resolution for them and for the people on an audit of Medicaid as well as temporary assistance for needy families. We provided reams of documentation, the entire program documents for Medicaid and temporary assistance for needy pro uh, families program to the Comptroller's Office. We provided access to employees. We told them they could interview the employees. They ended up actually filing subpoenas, which we said was unnecessary because they could interview the employees. And today they issued an, what allegedly is an audit, which is no more than four or five pages saying that we would not work with them. Well, folks, we have been working with them and unfortunately they've been wasting their time chasing red herrings that lead to nowhere. Uh, it wasn't too long ago that the controller said, trust but verify. And that's what we did today. We verified what the controller's office did. We spoke to uh, individuals associated not only with the Department of Social Services, but the hire worker, Mr. Doman, who agreed based on his testimony and his affidavit testimony that was presented before the legislature today that Ms. Fraz did not stumble upon a confidential document tote in an unsecured location, but that it was in a secured location and she basically created a half-truth saying that she was looking for a tote that had confidential controller documents in it. So it was not in an unsecured location, it was in a secured location in the Department of Social Services pen in the sub-basement. And they continued to push the story. Today, the controller said himself that documents were left in the trash. At no time have documents been left in the trash. What's very disappointing to me, and should truthfully be disappointing to the people of Erie County, is on his first audit, Comptroller Mihailu has destroyed the credibility of the Comptroller's Office. Now, this is not just a he said, she said between myself and Mr. Mihailu. Because as controller and as county executive, later this year, in all likelihood, we're going to appear before the rating agencies to seek an upgrade in Erie County's credit rating. And the credit rating agencies read each and every one of the reports that come from Erie County. Not just the financial reports, but the news stories, whether they be in paper or in video. And one of the first questions that's going to come out of the rating agency's mouth is, how can we trust the credibility of the controller's office when it appears that they lied and how they acquired documents earlier this year as part of an audit. And folks, we're talking about the credibility of Erie County government, not just one person, but the credibility of elected officials and the people that repre represent Erie County before everyone. So I'm very disappointed in how we got to this point today because it shows a lack of respect for the system. It shows a lack of respect for the people that you represent. If you're willing to create stories as to how you obtain documents, which of course were false. Now, my office continues to willing to work with the Comptroller and any audit that he does. Uh, I demand though, demand the return of the documents that were stolen by the Comptroller's office from the sub-basement. They were in a secure facility in the Department of Social Services area of the uh, sub-basement of Erie County's RAF building. They were not left on the curb where they were accessed by the Comptroller's Office. They were not left in an unsecured location. They were in a secured location in the Department of Social Services sub-basement room. They took those documents without the approval of the Department of Social Services. All along, he's been saying these documents were left in an unsecured location, and now we know from the video testimony that was shown today, as well as the affidavit testimony of Mr. Dahlman, that that document tote was in a secured location. I demand the return of those because his holding the take or his taking of those documents has put Erie County at risk to, for substantial fines for what would be considered the inappropriate release of documents. Well, now we know 
the documents were not obtained by anybody just walking and stumbling upon them, but because of the half-truths and Ms. Frost. Uh, as the former controller, it would be, if, if any of my employees did that when I was controller, I would have fired them on the spot. Because you cannot destroy the credibility of your office by stating one thing and going about it a different way. You have to go through the procedures that exist. And unfortunately, in the situation here, it appears that did not happen. As such, the credibility not only of the controller's office, but in some ways all of Erie County can be thrown out the window because if you can't believe the information that's coming from the controller's office, then truthfully, how can you believe what people in Erie County are saying? I spent a lot of time and effort as controller to restore the credibility of that office. There are some excellent civil servants, accountants, and auditors down there. I have a great deal of respect for those auditors and accountants. But unfortunately, it appears in less than six months in office, Mr. Mahilo disregarded all the hard work of what we've done in the past, the hard work of those auditors, and created a scenario which is false. And, and that's wrong. That's wrong for the people of Erie County. Uh, that is why I am demanding the return of those documents so that we can see actually whose information was accessed and let those individuals know, if need be, by, is required by the federal government, that some confidential information was seen by the Comptroller's Office, even though they did not have a right to do that. Take some questions. But Ms. Frost says that she didn't just go down there, that it was actually a county work, right? I'm not sure whether this individual was a janitor or not, that actually took her um, to... I think if you look at actually what happened in the video and you read Mr. Dauman's affidavit, Harold, you see that is not the case. Actually, I've seen the video. When they go in the, the basement, when they enter the sub-basement, the county hire worker that she goes down with turns to the right, which is where most non-confidential totes are located, including, I believe, the controller's totes. And she says, no, no, we need to go to the left. And she went to the Department of Social Service room. Uh, so the video evidence alone, even when you com com uh, compile it with the testimony of Mr. Dahman and his affidavit, shows that you cannot trust her words. Uh, I, I find it very, very distressing that to be the case, because I said, if my deputy controller, when I was controller, if Michael Zucala had done something like that, he would be immediately fired. Every one of the, my, my staff members knew, you go and do audits through standard audit protocol. You do not create facts. You do not lie. You do not create half-truths. If you have an audit that does not find anything wrong, well, that's fine, because that actually means things are, are going very well in the county. And there were a number of times when I issued audits which were not that critical of county government because things were done properly. You don't create facts, which truthfully aren't facts, but you don't create facts to try to reach a result to prove something that you're hoping to find in an audit. The original intent of this audit was to determine that Erie County was recertifying Medicaid recipients, which we never disagreed with because under state law, that's the pro protocol you want to follow. The state specifically says you have to recertify the individual even if you don't have an opportunity to review their file before the end of the original certification period. That's the state law. We told the Comptroller's Office that. I think they realized very quickly, well, we're doing an audit to try to criticize the administration, and not just my administration, it would have been critical of the Collins administration as well. Because the Collins administration, the Giambra administration, the Gorski administration all did this. Why? Because that's the state protocol. I think they found out very quickly that they announced that they were doing this big audit on Medicaid recertification and temporary assistance for needy family recertification and found out it wasn't much of an audit because Erie County was following state protocol. So then they started reaching out in other directions. Now, having been the chief auditor of Erie County myself as controller, I know sometimes you do audits and you find information that leads you in different directions. The problem here is they didn't find information that led them into different directions. They created information that led them into a different direction. They went into a secured area to take advantage of a tote that happened to be in a secured area instead of what they originally and have been claiming for months now. They were sitting in an unsecured area in the sub-basement. Well, we now know the truth. those totes was to get information that 
uh, Department of Social Services was refusing to share with the Comptroller's Office for its audit. We, we were willing to share documents with the Comptroller's Office, and they agreed because we signed a confidentiality agreement that stated you will have the right to look at these confidential documents as long as you agree not to reveal the confidential nature of the documents. Because it's like my Medicaid Inspector General, Michael Zucala. We have the ability to look at every Medicaid recipient, but we do not have the power under New York State law to reveal the information about specifics of Medicaid recipients. We can do the aggregate, the amalgamation, so to speak. So we can show X amount of people in Erie County are on Medicaid based on this age group, but we can't say who and, and the reasons behind it. We signed a confidentiality agreement. We worked with the Comptroller's Office. We said, we cannot allow you under state law to look at these documents unless you're willing to sign a confidentiality agreement. And they agreed to, and they signed it. And then they went about it and went this way. So his argument that he wouldn't be able to prove it unless he took the tote is completely false because we gave him the opportunity to look through the documents. And did they rubber stamp Medicaid recertifications? Well, I've said, Medicaid law under state law, and we even have the document here from, the, from, from New York State, uh, dated February 15, 2013, which we gave to the Comptroller, says, extending coverage for 12 months for recipients who return to re renewal, but where the county was and is unable to complete a redetermination re of eligibility prior to the coverage expiration date, is a reasonable action to take to ensure there is no lapse in coverage. This is within state policy, provided a redetermination of eligibility is made as soon as possible filing the authorization end date. That's exactly what Erie County was doing. Erie County, if they couldn't, because truthfully we're understaffed, Mr. Mahalo should know that because we are understaffed, uh, if they can't get to every de determination by the end of the recertification, by the end of the original date, then by law, we have to sort of rubber stamp it and review it as soon as thereafter, which is what we've been doing and what every county executive did before, because that's the state policy. As I said, this is within state policy provided redetermination of eligibility is made as soon as possible following the original authorization date. Uh, a time period of 90 days for redetermination of eligibility is reasonable, which seems to be the average timeline for Erie County if they don't get it by the, the end date. The redetermination of eligibility should include a review of the renewal and any accompanying information, a new Medicaid budget to support the coverage period and a reconciliation of any back-end matches. Uh, we do that. And we provide it in this documentation to prove it. Unfortunately, you don't hear anything about it in his audit. This is Medicaid. This audit alone, oops, I dropped it here. This audit talks about, on the cover, talks about temporary assistance for needy families, but then if you read through it, which I did, since it was announced this morning, it goes through everything. It talks about Medicaid, it talks about temporary assistance for me needy families. And in the end, it, it tries to claim that, well, they, they weren't able to do the audit because we wouldn't give them access to information. We did give them access to information. They've got plenty of information. I think what this audit is saying is we thought we were going to find something bad with regards to recertifications, and we found out pretty soon thereafter that they were actually following state policy. So instead of admitting it, in the paper audit, they talk about, well, we didn't give them information, and, and let's talk about confidential totes. Well, Mr. Mahalo himself repeated many times, said, trust but verify. Ronald Reagan used to talk about that when he was talking about the Soviets and the missiles, and should they actually go out there and trust the Soviets when they say they were reducing the missiles. A little different situation between the SALT talks and the START talks between the United States and the Soviets, but the same principle applies, trust but verify. Unfortunately, when we did verify, his story didn't make, make sense. Because when we talked to the hire worker, Mr. Dowman, he said, they came to me and said they left confidential documents in a controller's tote and they needed to get access to them. I took them downstairs. The video shows exactly the same timeline. And I noted, I, I was watching it today. I, I could watch it through a media source. And I was watching it today and I found it interesting after providing all that information, the only thing that Ms. Frost said is, no, Mr. Dowman's lying. We've provided reams and reams of documentation and even have an affidavit from Mr. Dowman. And throughout this entire process, this is all we have from the Comptroller's Office. We're telling the truth. Any other questions? All right, everyone, thank you.
Scott, um, there's, there's, there's one issue that you can see the path that she's on. If we, if we go into the, uh, um, that, yes, that storage area, um, we have to ask you not to film anything that shows somebody's name on it. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, we can call This is the storage area where they're talking about the toads. Yeah, what we want to show you, we're offering to the legislature.